Hey everyone, today we're talking about how to write geometry proofs. We'll do three examples together, one with line segments, supplementary angles, and finally a proof of the vertical angle theorem. Before we get started, be sure to like and subscribe for more math tutorials like this. Let's go. Here we have a problem asking us to do a proof on a statement about this line segment. The first tip is just to understand the problem itself. In our given statement, this is something that is definitely true and you're going to base all of the next steps in your proof on this statement. It says that point B is the midpoint of our line segment AC. In your head, you should already be thinking that, okay, this means the length of these two segments are equal. And it's asking us to prove the length of AC is two times the length of AB. Since we now understand the problem, let's actually get started on the proof itself. We'll always have two columns, one for statements and another one for the reason why that statement is true. To get started, let's always write down the given as our first step. So here we'll literally just write B is the midpoint of segment AC. And the reason is just that it's given. Easy points right here. For the next step, like we said earlier, because B is the midpoint of this line segment, it's fair to say that the segment AB is congruent to the other half of the segment BC. And that's just the definition of a midpoint. Tip three, let's start applying rules to get to the end goal, which is usually the hardest part for me. In the end goal, or the prove statement, we're trying to prove that the length of AC is two times the length of AB. So I want to start talking in terms of the lengths of these segments, not just that they're congruent. So we can say that because AB is congruent to BC, that means that the length of AB is equal to the length of BC. It seems like an easy step, but it's also easy to miss. For the reason, this is just the definition of congruent segments. Now, what else will help me get to the end result? In our last step, we were talking about how the length of AB is equal to BC, but the question is asking us to prove something about AC. So we need to get that in there somehow. Just looking at the diagram, we know that AC equals AB plus BC, right? Let's write that down. For the reason, that's just the segment addition postulate. Okay, so now we have both AC and AB written in our statements. Let's leave the AC from this equation because that's exactly what we need. But how do we get to the 2AB? If you look at the statement above, it says that the length of AB is equal to the length of BC. So we can actually substitute for AB here. We'll get the length of AC equals AB plus AB and the reason is substitution. We're so close, AB plus AB is just 2AB, and the reasoning is just simplifying or combining like terms. And that's it, we've successfully reached the expression we're trying to prove, which is the measure of AC is two times the measure of AB. For our next problem, let's work with angles. Let's first try to understand the given and prove statements. It's saying angle one and angle two are supplementary, which means that the angles add up to 180 degrees. Then it also says angle two and angle three are supplementary as well. Sometimes it helps to draw pictures to help you visualize. Just keep in mind that different people might come up with different drawings, which is totally fine, as long as it helps you visualize and it also correctly represents the statement. Next, the prove statement is asking you to prove that angle one and angle three are congruent. Next, let's do the easy part, which is write down the given statements. We'll copy down that the angles are supplementary. The reason is again just that it's given. We've already established that supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees, right? So let's make that official and write it down. 
the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180 degrees. Don't forget the m's, that's just notation because we're talking now about the measure of the angles. We'll write the same for angle 2 and angle 3. The reason is just the definition of supplementary angles. Finally, let's start by applying some rules to get to the end goal. We're trying to prove that angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent. So we have to show somehow that angle 1 and angle 3 are related. Since this equals to 180 and this also equals to 180, we can actually just set them equal to each other. This is due to the transitive property. I guess you could also say it's substitution, but it's more specifically the transitive property. See how in our last step we have angle 2 on both sides of the equation? we can actually subtract the measure of angle 2 from both sides of the equation. It's just like a normal algebra, if you have a random x on both sides of the equation, you can simplify it by subtracting x from both sides. So this is like the same thing, but with angles. Now we have the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. This is exactly what we wanted because that means angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent. And the reason is the definition of congruent angles. Last problem, which is not really a fully different problem, I wanted to go through proving the vertical angle theorem, which says if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. First, let's understand the problem. It's saying that angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles, which means that they're directly across from each other like this. In the proof, we need to show that the angles are congruent. So basically, if we prove that the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 3 are equal, we've done our job. Next, let's write down the first step, which is always the given statement. Let's start applying some rules now. Looking at the diagram, we can say that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, right? Because they're along the same line. Angle 2 and angle 3 are also supplementary because they're also along the same line. For the reason, you can say we're using the linear pair postulate that just says two angles along the same line are supplementary. Now, this problem should look really familiar because it's actually the same problem we just did before this. We can pretty much copy over the same proof, which gets us that angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent. I just mainly wanted to show that it can be intimidating if you're asked to prove a postulate or a theorem, but it's not too bad if you break it down like a normal problem. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching this video on how to write geometry proofs. Coming up, I'll be going over proofs with triangles and parallel lines, so stay tuned. Again, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more math tutorials like this. See you in the next one.